Hello and welcome again to another video. This will be hopefully an interesting one. I will be talking about the concept of interest rate parity. What does that mean? Well, interest rates around the world are very different. In some countries they're quite high, in some countries they're considerably lower. And one of the questions that I am asked quite consistently in social settings, you know, you are at a party, people have a, cup, have a couple of glasses of wine, I'm a finance professor, so people naturally <laughs> ask me what to do with their money. And one of the questions that comes up from time to time is, why wouldn't you want to borrow in a country with lower interest rates in order to invest in a country with higher interest rates? For some time, the mortgage rates in New Zealand were considerably higher than they were in the UK. And quite a few people were asking me this exact same questions. Why, why wouldn't you borrow in the UK in order to purchase a house in New Zealand? Well, one obvious reason is that we don't have security in the UK. Most of us don't. So that becomes an unsecured loan, which makes things a little bit tricky. But the main reason is what we call interest rate parity. Now, uh, I will be using my cheat sheet here with the numbers. So let's say that your rich American uncle has left you an inheritance of 100,000 US dollars. Okay. And let's say that you have an investment horizon of one year. So you need this money one year from now. Now, there are two ways of doing this. You could either deposit this money in a bank in the United States, and then a year later, um, a year later you can uh, transfer them in, into New Zealand, or you could convert them into New Zealand dollars today, put it into a New Zealand bank, and then at the end you will have your balance. So let's say that you keep your money in the United States. I have just uh, earlier this morning checked the rates that you would get on your savings in Bank of America and they are pretty much zero. <laughs> but for the instructional purposes, we'll assume that the interest rate is 0.1%. So a year later, you would get 100,000 and 100 dollars. Okay, so your money obviously didn't grow that much. Or the current exchange rate between the US and New Zealand dollar is 0.7169. So uh, one New Zealand dollar will buy you 0.7169 American. That will give you $139,495. And we will assume, which is actually pretty close to the truth, that the interest rate in New Zealand at the moment is 1%, which means that a year from now, your balance will be $140,889.95 under the interest rate parity. When a year in a year you transfer your American balance into New Zealand, you have to end up with exactly the same cash flow. And the interest rate, uh, sorry, the exchange rate that would give you exactly the same cash flow is 0 0.7104. That is the interest rate. So notice that uh, New Zealand dollar has depreciated, has become cheaper relative to the American dollar. I mean, yes, you could in principle borrow in America at this low rate, invest in New Zealand in the, uh, for, for, for the higher rate, but all your differences will be completely wiped out 
by the change in the exchange rate. So let's say, let's say for a second that the exchange rate a year from now is not this 0.7104, and I will use quite a large deviation. So let's say it's 0 0.75. So interest rate parity actually does not hold. What will you do? Well, look, uh, in investments and in economics, we have a concept that is called the law of one price. If two assets are identical, they should cost the same. If two assets have the same risk, they should have the same return. So here we have two assets that should result in the same, they are the same, it's the same asset. We start from the same starting point, we should have, end up at the same finish line. Now, let's say that this law of one price is violated. What will I do? I will borrow. One hundred thousand US dollars. I will immediately transfer them into New Zealand. I will deposit them into New Zealand uh, in, in New Zealand. So in a year I will get and then I will transfer them back in Amer into American dollars at this exchange rate, not at this one, but at this one. And uh, I will get uh, that is the number one hundred and five thousand dollars, six sixty seven and change. Now <laughs> This, uh, there is a strong assumption here. I assume that I will be able to borrow at this rate. Of course, for us regular Joes, it's not possible. We cannot possibly borrow at the same rate that, and, at which we deposit. But for larger financial institutions, they can pretty much operate at this wholesale rate. So remember, this is where I ended with. How much do I have to pay back? Only this much. This is called arbitrage. This is free money. Uh, and that's the reason why conditions like this don't really exist, okay? Because that way I can make risk-free profit. So, uh, long story short, what is the takeaway here? That differences in interest rates across countries, and they do exist, of course, cannot really be taken advantage of. You should not be able to do something like this because of interest rate parity, because the movement in the future exchange rates will basically cancel out any differences in the interest rates that you may have. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you in the next video.